This is New England Soccer Weekly with Tom Quinlan, Nick Giuliano, and Mike DeSilva on 790 The Score. Rome is burning. Oh. Camelot has collapsed. The Titanic has sunk, and the Hindenburg didn't look this bad. I knew the Hindenburg was coming. I felt it. All comes together. Very good. The dream of an MLS Cup run with Bruce Arena is over. And the dream of an MLS Cup might not come at all this year. And you know what? I'll give you a Tommy Quinlan guarantee. Oh, Off boy. the rip? It's not happening this year. Okay. The season is <laughs> over. And what you've Place experienced... Place your wagers for them to win the MLS Cup right now. Right I, would, as you I, I normally say at this point, clip that, but we're like 12 seconds in, so yeah. don't worry And about what it. you've experienced over the last week, you should be... As frustrated as all hell, as we've talked about over the last several days on my Twitter. And the anger, well, I think the anger has been misguided. And we'll go over that today. By the way, the game doesn't matter. Screw the game in Colorado. If they're not being Colorado this weekend, then just cancel the season altogether. Oh boy. Mike, Nick, guys, how are you? What's up, Mike? How are you? How are you? I'm feeling good. I'm a little nervous. I think this See, is going to be this is going to be one of those where you and I are here, but it might just be just Tom going off. Today. You know what it is? Tom infiltrated. He he comes and visits me on the morning show that I do on Hot 106 okay. uh, at the nine o'clock hour. And today we had a good, healthy conversation. I could see I could see it brewing in his brain what he was bringing to New England Soccer Weekly this week, and I'm ready. Six weeks of no answers. Six weeks of vague explanations of why Bruce Arena is not around. Six weeks of players not knowing why Bruce Arena is not around. Six weeks of fans not knowing why Bruce Arena is not around. And The Athletic, which Tom Bogart, our guest today, drops a bomb. Bang. Boom. What, 20 minutes before the game versus Minnesota the other night? Tom Bogart and 30 Powell- minutes, something like that. <laughs> Tom Bogart and Pablo Maurer dropped the bomb that Bruce Arena is expected to step down, very specific phrase, expected to step down, and that Richie Williams appears to be the guy that may have turned Bruce in. Mm. So there's a lot to digest here. There's a lot of reporting that we want to go over with The Athletic. Tom Bogert, friend of the show, uh, insider for The Athletic, and he's also on MLS Extra Time on Apple TV and on uh, MLSsoccer.com. Welcome back to Providence, Thomas. Tommy What's going on, boys? Sorry, so. So sorry, I messed that up. I I started making noise before you even introed me. That's, no, it's that's, fine. That's tough. That's a faux pas. It, it, you it, you look fine. towards the camera. I thought that was that was directed towards me, and I was like, oh wait, they haven't even introed me yet. So we're off to a banner start here. No, listen, it's you're beautiful. you've you've had a banner week. This yeah. is probably, this is not going to be a congressional investigation, although it may feel like one <laughs> as I as I as we go through everything here. Because I would like to, I appreciate you giving us the time to go piece by piece by this because if you have followed your Twitter, you have been very. Which you th- should, by the way, if you're into you, United you know, American soccer. Ninety percent of our yes. audience, if not one hundred percent of our audience, follows Tom Bogart already. Agreed. For sure, they That's should be fair. Um, you have gone detail by detail when guys have met, time by time, hour by hour. So this is just a masterclass, if you will of reporting over the last week here. So let's go through it. Let's start with Saturday and work our way to the Richie Williams press conference and then the training debacle. (sighs) Start with Richie Williams. Simple question to start off. Did Richie turn in Bruce because Richie was upset about his job status going into next year? Yes, we can't conclusively say that. Um, again, this is like, I'm going to tr- probably be a little bit boring on this because because you have to be careful with these investigations. Like There's legal stuff involved. Speak. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I mean, just the timeline is that like like over this, like the relationship had frayed and, and we had been told over like a year or two, like this wasn't something that just came up in, in the last few weeks or the last even couple months. Like there had been more and more arguments, which look, that's that's par for the course in any professional locker room between, on the coaching staff. Uh, but we were told that it, it kind of got worse and worse. So I guess the relationship deteriorated to a point where um, Bruce seemed to indicate that Richie wasn't going to be back next year. And he told his agent, hey, you should try to, you know, get him a, a different job. Right. Um, and then, you know, however, how much longer later, so uh, let me, let Bruce was under investigation. Real quick. How bad did the relationship get that Bruce can't even talk to Richie directly? He has to go dire- He has to go through his legal representation. So so that that's a good catch. But so I'll clarify that is that. Uh, Richie and Ian Harks are repped by the same agent. And so when the revs were signing Ian Harks, 
obviously Bruce was, was talking to his agent, his representation during that time. So like, that's where it came out. And again, maybe like, I don't think the relationship had frayed to that point where they, they couldn't talk to each other, but like, that's kind of what it's not like he was sidestepping Richie. He was like, Oh, by the way, I'm talking to his agent. You, you should probably try to try to get this other job. Did the agent find out before Richie? I guess so. But like, again, I, like Richie's not an idiot. Like he, you know, his contract was expiring at the end of the year and Bruce got an extension and he didn't. Right. Like, and, and the relationship was where it was. So I, again, I, I and, and I want to be careful too. Like even that yeah, conversation between understand. Bruce and his agent is, is like not a definitive, like you are absolutely not coming back. It's just, that was the feeling that was, and again, like reading between the lines of, of suggesting, Hey, you should probably, you should try to get him this other job. Like, unless it, you think that that's so much better of a job that, you know, Hey, I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart. Like you can assume that like, he's probably not going to be back. Can we, can we back up for a little bit, Tom, before we move forward, you've been reporting for a long time, right? Seven, six or seven weeks goes by where nothing comes out anywhere. Have you have you ever seen a story like this and then obviously have it all come out at once like it did Saturday night? No, honestly. And look, like part of the frustration, and, and how do I say this without sounding like like an a-hole? Me, me and Pablo, I, I'd say our networks are, are very extensive. I think that we have a lot, a lot, a lot of contact. We were frustrated at the beginning because the circle was so tight on who actually knew. And the barometer for reporting the story is obviously very, very high. They were such a tight circle that like we couldn't get any like enough definitive information over the first few weeks. And, and we kept trying. And, and I'll give Pablo a ton of credit here that like he he was he was really driving like the determination. He's like, nah, like, come on, like we can get the story. We can get the story. So like, no, like I haven't experienced anything where between me and him. Like whether I can always get a story or not, but like, but the two of us putting our our you know full focus and full networks to this, like, it, it was pretty wild how tight the circle was and like how few people really knew. Again, like you alluded to it before, and, and I'm sure we're gonna get into it, but like the players and staff didn't know definitively, and and I guess technically still don't. I mean, they they have a, a very very strong idea, but like that's how tight the circle was. There's only a couple of people with like firsthand knowledge. Yeah, and a couple of those guys ain't around in the building anymore. We'll get to those guys in the in a couple of minutes. Do you wanna? Chairman? No, I'll make my point when we get to that because I have uh, somebody in particular I'm very upset is no longer with the, right. the organization. So, uh, all right, so let's continue to work our way through with this. Were the Revs blindsided by this report coming out before the game? No, no, no. It's, so it, they had an idea that you guys were on this? They had an idea for like 48 hours that we were close. So right after Bruce meets with the Crafts that Thursday, because you lay it out perfectly, mm -hmm. um, Tuesday... Don Garber meets with Bruce. Yep. Wednesday happens. Thursday, Bruce is back in Gillette for the first time, or back in Foxborough for the first time, to our knowledge, meeting with the Crafts, presumably to say goodbye. And then Saturday, we get the information. So was it Thursday after the meeting or before the meeting with the Crafts did you guys reach out to the refs? That we like we we started gathering that info more on like Friday, so gotcha. Okay, because again, like yeah, we we didn't find out about that, but again, yeah. Okay, so so we go through the game. The uh, the report comes out there, and there's an MLS rule where players and coaches aren't allowed to be on their phones ninety minutes, I believe, before games. So would Richie or the players have had any idea that maybe this was dropping? Yes, like. Again, we, 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 I'm trying, I don't know how much I'm even allowed to say, but like, I'm, I'll tell you the journalist, like our journalistic process and standards are, are pretty high. And sure. it's, we, we, again, you can see it in the story where it's, you know, representatives or whatever for, and then inserting all of the parties, all of the parties knew this was, this was coming. There was, you know, may, maybe the, maybe the players didn't, but like, again, like, I, I think that okay, it's, so it's something that, 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 like, I don't know, people talk, right? So who knows? Sure. The, so the Bruce resignation happens. Revs cancel the press conference. Isn't you, the timing of all of that coming out the way that it did so interesting too? I mean, right. It's, it's so in, ten, yeah. yeah, you're right. So ten thirty, freaking Minnesota ties the game on a Dane Sinclair assist. <laughs> it was like it was like, a, <laughs> it was like meant to be. And then I will say, no, we're not breaking the game down, but Minnesota, they pretty much deserve to win that game. I think first half was different. <laughs> I thought I thought it felt like the second half, the guys found out that the athletic report dropped and then they just said, screw it. But we'll get to that in a second. Okay, cool. Um, ten thirty three. The Bruce Arena resignation gets denounced. Were you were you shocked by that? Yes, yes, I I, I did not see that coming. I did not I did not know that there was going to be an official uh, announcement. 
What do you think is why 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 do you think that happened then? Like why at that time? Yeah, was it the timing, or did you you still knew that he was probably out? I knew we knew that he was out, but we didn't know what the phrasing was going to be or what exactly the the final details are going to be. So so like I I, I can I I thought that we weren't going to get an announcement until early this week, but you know. So Saturday again, I'm going to go back to a question I asked you earlier. So in all the years that you've been doing this with a story <laughs> of this magnitude, have you ever seen? a news drop like that at 10 30 at night after a game it is mls no this was this is something and, and on come on on tom brady's homecoming weekend no less that's crazy yeah, well that Good point. Be, listen, that's it. how they try to hide it it's because the next day you know who's going to be thinking about that they're going to be worried about you know their hometown hero coming back all right so <laughs> so they get on a plane and nothing sunday nothing monday monday night we get the media schedule Richie Williams is scheduled to speak with the media with Carlos at noon on Tuesday. Let's go through the timeline on Tuesday now. Again, this is all on Tom Bogert's uh, Twitter feed. He, he, I mean, this it's is like a deposition almost. It, 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 yeah. it, it, this <laughs> is why I said this is going to sound like a congressional yeah. hearing. You're not under arrest, Tom. At any point, you can choose to leave. You can also ask for an attorney <laughs> if you'd like. The fifth. <laughs> <laughs> He's already told us the attorneys are involved. So. Uh, that is a good valid point. 8.40 a.m., meeting with players, President Brian Bellello and HR to ask questions about the Bruce Arena situation. Now, was this the head of HR or was this an HR representative? And was this the head of HR for the Kraft Sports Group or was this an HR representative for the revolution? I'm not I'm not super locked into the in and outs of the org chart for HR at, at the Crafts at New sure. England at the Rev. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not totally sure. <laughs> Who in HR from the New England side took over this investigation? Was it the revolution HR or was it Kraft HR or were they not involved at all until after the league got involved? I, like the, the the protocol here just generally is to go through the league like i know that the league um had an outside law firm that that they've used for other investigations and stuff so i know that they were kind of leading it I, I believe at least and then you know again i'm sure that the club was involved but but again like i, I don't know the exact ins and outs here sure so 9 40 a.m unsatisfied with their time with Bolello, players requested and were granted time with the entire coaching staff now if you've been up to gillette before these guys usually start training around 10 a.m and then we come in our stupid mugs around 11 30 11 45 <laughs> to go interview those guys on most days just for context purposes here 11 40 a.m so they have a two-hour meeting with uh I guess the coaching staff here, the entire coaching staff and yeah. players are still unsatisfied with a lack of information and Richie Williams. So are they unsatisfied with Richie or are they unsatisfied with the lack of information they're getting? Both because like, well, part of it was that like Richie from, from what we were told, Richie didn't answer many questions directly or, so just or did up. a lot of, it was mostly like, you know, his press conference on, on Monday or whatever it was. It was a, hey, like, I, I can't answer that kind of thing. I had to, you know, refer those questions to the league. He, from guys. what we were told, he, he kind of did that in the locker room with the players and staff, which didn't go over well. But the guys knew that there was a bad relationship there with Showery and Richie, and there's all this yeah, drama yeah, yeah. that we clearly never knew about. But... We didn't, but when you read the reports, I mean, it's, it would be difficult as a player to not see all of this happening on the sideline, and there, that clearly there was a fracture there. And this, and it's been mm -hmm. established at this point with the information we've gotten that Showery did kind of go rogue because right. we brought up his tweet last week. and Well, Showery's been going off a lot on Twitter. So he's right. going to be a loose cannon, I think. Right, but I understand that. But also, like, there was signs of this fracture – you know, when he first sent out that tweet in support of Bruce, right. that, you know, the, what was to follow was written in the sand. Like, you could have you seen this coming. So, back to this timeline of events here. At what point between 9.40 and 11.40 a.m. do the players, in your mind, say, we're not training today? Well, well so, so you laid out that timeline as well. Like, whatever time they were supposed to train, they, so it was just supposed to be that 8.40 meeting. We're going to clear the air. We're going to talk. And then, hey, we're going to move forward. And we're going to train. So they they said, no, this isn't good enough. We want to talk to Rich. Like, we're not training. We, we need to talk about this more. So, again, like the the, the club and, and a couple players, too, to, to be fair, have kind of said, yeah, like we didn't like, you know, go on strike and, and refuse to train or whatever. And like for me, that that's semantics. Like we like they would have trained if they did not request further meetings. And then but like that's why the, the team had to push back the press conference. And that's why. Hey, they, they even said why part of why Carlos Hill wasn't available on, on Tuesday was because they had a lot of meetings during the morning, which, again, the, the, the latters of which were unplanned. 
So this is where I think people start to get confused a little bit. On September 13th, Seth uh, Maycomer from the Blazing Musket puts out a tweet saying that Matt Polster of the New England Revolution tells him that the players never refused to train yesterday. After a long day of meetings, the players, coaches, and front office staff mutually agreed to not train. So where's the discrepancy here? Yeah, I, I think it just comes back down to that. So like they would have trained if they didn't request, like demand another meeting and that went for a couple hours. Is refusal look, too like, strong of a word? I don't know because again, we, we stand by reporting and like, sure, like, hey, we're not training. And then the coaches can be like, all right, we agree. Is that mutual? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of, you're kind of, you're right. You're kind of forced into it, but the players had the control at that point because yeah. they, they're not happy and they're not, they're not satisfied. Well, with the and I think you just heard that tweet. You heard what Tom said too. So as a player, you think back, right? So you just had four hours of a meeting mentally drained after <laughs> yeah. trying to figure stuff well, out. So you know what? It's Tuesday. We're just going to take this the isn't day the, off. Yeah, this isn't. Know? But it's also, Mike, my, my, but, but this is where it gets a little fuzzy for me. Are those guys worried about the league coming after them for breaking any CBA rules for specifically <laughs> saying that they're holding out? Now, if we all come together and say, oh, we're all mutually deciding not to train, yeah. well, I mean, that's it, one thing. But if those guys use the specific language of refusal. I think that would have to do more with if it was like a game. If they refuse to play a game, then that goes more into the, you know, the CBA. Yeah, this seems side. just like it was a They it can was choose a to not train. Well, you know, they figured, you, yeah. That's the expert. Tommy, Tommy, that's a good point. That like, so like again, I, I I can't say any of this definitively. I don't know for sure, but like somebody floated that as a thought to me. It's like, is this like a violation of CBA if like they technically refuse? So like, okay, maybe that's part. Or but like, look, I, I think by by that point they're like, let's move forward enough with, with I guess all this crap. Like, you know, the changes were coming later that day. Or Bologna, as Kurt Alpha would say. <laughs> all the noise. Great. Yeah. So then. Okay, so we get the so we have the Richie Williams press conference at noon. You're on that call with Pablo Mauer, your uh, coworker, uh, your colleague, and then seven hours later, between twelve thirty and seven forty five p.m. on Tuesday, now Richie Williams is no longer interim manager. And according to Brian Bellello on Wednesday, it's because everybody feels bad for Richie. Richie's under a lot of pressure right now. There's a lot of people saying things about Richie. That was the moment that stuck out to me the most from that press conference. Why does everybody feel bad about <laughs> Richie if we don't know what Richie did? Didn't they show their hand a little bit on Wednesday? Then that there was a follow up. I forget who asked it, but somebody. It might have been that would, you. That yeah, would it was you, right? Boy, <laughs> hand up. It was. Hand it, up. It was that was astute. And and then they uh, uh, the the explanation was um, yeah his name has been in the media a lot like there's a lot of pressure you know all the guys here that like do this job they just want to coach and you know to that I'd say this isn't a a men's league Wednesday night game like it's literally part of the coach's contracts that you have to do media this like this isn't some unfair spotlight or something new right like like he know, he's been, been in this fine. game again Richie Williams has, has been in this game in this profession for a couple decades. He knows the media request. Like, this isn't new to him. This isn't like some some sixteen year old kid who's just like, oh my god, stop putting a microphone in my face. So I thought that was a little weird. Can it I was. can I ask you both a question? At, going back to the Richie Williams press conference, when it was over, did you think the next dominoes that were going to fall happened that quickly? Like after after you asked the questions, press conference is over. Did you think twenty four hours later he would be gone and a new coach? Would Six be hours later, yeah. something like that. Like yes. like I mean, I, I, I so. Then again, the timeline that like I don't know specific timings of when Kurt Anolfo met with some senior players about this. But once we heard about, I believe that was after the press conference. But like once we heard about that, I was like, oh yeah, like sounds like this could happen as soon as tonight or like tomorrow morning. And then it did. Um, it's it's funny we were we were on that too. <laughs> like we were I don't know a couple minutes away from from publishing our like sources. Richie Williams is is no longer going to be the interim coach, and then. So the Rebs beat us to that on that. <laughs> what's the uh, your sources around the league? Like, what's the stance of of other teams, other clubs? Because obviously we're dialed in here. This is the team that we cover, the team that we follow. So it's People massive news. But is the rest of the league as dialed into this as we are? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We we get I get a lot of what the hell is going on in New England. This is a bleep show. Or like again, sources from around the league. Like, do you know what what Bruce said? Or like, you know, I'm getting like a lot. Of, it's funny. Like, it's like the questions that I get from people on Twitter being like, hey, like what, like, hey, we don't have any, it's like the same thing with, you know, sources across the league. Like it's, it's wild just how limited the information has been and how tight it is. And, and, and you know, again, to that point and, and, and really quickly, because I, I want to be able to say this out loud. I do feel bad for Richie that they made him do the press conference Tuesday where he couldn't say anything or Monday, whatever day it was, where he couldn't say anything 
And then six hours later, they reassign him or whatever the phrasing is going to be about his future. Like, I think that's a little bit unfair. But do you think that's because they had no other choice? Like, because as it looks like right now, Richie appears to be a whistleblower. So did Bolello think there is no good option here? I can't keep him in the dark and keep him in the basement all day. We have to be able to do something with him. Now, I think it's just it's the discrepancy is, well, you know that the media attention is going to be bad. You know that the fans are going to be pissed. You know that all of the 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 guns are directed on Richie. You know, yeah, I mean, why, it's part of it. it That's part of it's it. It's part of the He's business. He's still part it's, of the organization right he's now. He's still part of the organization right yeah. now. I don't know what his status is. They really didn't clarify that. Just nope. he's on the he's just on the payroll. He's just here. Um, it, it, the, the way it was described to me is it's like they're still figuring it out. Like put like that part of the press conference was just like, like I I forget if they said this directly or, or hinted at it or not, but but they seem as far as I'm concerned, they, they, you know, what they seem flat footed. Yeah, I mean, it's again, like to put out that press uh, release uh, on Tuesday night or yeah Tuesday night to put out that press release on Tuesday night and not have any information about Richie's job status. They are so <laughs> flat footed right now. They don't know which way to turn. Um, is this it for Bruce? You think this is there, there's no. There's no way back at this point towards the end of his career. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, uh, th- this is no inside information for me, but like, just looking at it from a macro view, 71 years old, he's been in this game for a long time. There was some rumbling, like, you know, e- even when the Revs won the Shield uh, in 21, it was like, oh, do you, could this be Bruce's last year? And then, you know, we're two years removed from that. So this conversation had already kind of started a couple of years ago. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the only thing that I think is like, maybe he tries to like, hey, like I don't want to go out like this. But but again, this is a seventy-one year old man. He's accomplished everything there is to accomplish in in this game. So I don't know. May, maybe there's a front office role for him somewhere if he like really doesn't want to be retired at some point. But again, then the legalities of having to go through MLS and petition with the commissioner to be reinstated, essentially, um, it, it's all messy. And and you know, again, I have nothing but speculation at this we're point. We're gonna we're gonna push you to get that first tell all sit down with Bruce hey, when, hey, when he has. Uh... We, we, we gotta promote <laughs> ourselves a little bit here, all right? Well, you yes, know, we're we, gonna we, subscribe to the Athletic. We're supporting. But God damn it, this art's a lot of Well, we're going to get the finder's fee, Tom, right? Just, you know, we're going to get the finder's fee here. That's a good point. That's I mean, a good Tom, point. Tom, Tom has Tommy. Thanksgiving dinner at the arena. At we the support arena, our so friends. You, think, you know, it's all about I mean, come on. What goes around, comes around. You know, maybe he gives us the next one. <laughs> I mean, that, listen, I, we've been doing this show, Tom, Tom, for... Three years now, I've never seen him get that offended Jeez. on anything. That was God. that was the most offensive. That was great. Yeah, because we want the scoop. I mean, I'm happy for him. He's a great guy. His name is I like Tom, him. But his name is Scoops. And also... So is my name. Do you think... Who, wait, really? wait, who gave you that name? You called me Tommy Scoops before. I was Tom, by accident. I call you Tommy Takes. You call me Tommy you, Takes. Tommy Takes is better. I'd rather be have, Tommy yeah. Takes. But also, Scoops, you're Tommy Takes. <laughs> I love that. God's greener. Do you think Bruce is going to sit down with you? He remembers you from all the press conferences. That is true. We had some good moments. I'm the one that asked him whether or not he was coming back in 2022, and he gave me a nice little candid answer. All right. well, we can go back. But anyways, let's, 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 let's bring it back. Neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Shall we, Joseph? <laughs> was he expecting to be the next guy, and Richie was upset because he thought he should have been the next guy? No, not No, I don't think so. That That's not um, my understanding. At least, again, well, I, I can't speak. each other. Question <laughs> like a lot of like um I I don't know again like I, again this, these things do happen on, on staffs across the league across all soccer leagues and stuff so I want to be able to paint it that this isn't just a revolution exclusive thing again maybe some of the altercations were further than other places but there are a lot of disagreements there are you know difficult interpersonal dynamics in, in locker rooms I don't know what if there was a specific specific moment or anything but. But again, it, it was clear that those relationships were also frayed, you know, over the last few weeks. It was, you know, deteriorated past the point of, of you know, salvaging. Do you see, I actually put out the question, Carlos, yesterday, if he's committed to this club for 2024. He said he has a year left in his contract, but he really didn't. That was an interesting answer. Yeah. That was like, it, it wasn't a yes. <laughs> it was not a yes. No. And you know what? I don't know if he wants to be here for the rebuild. What are the vibes that you get from players right now, especially um, guys like Carlos? Do they want to be here for whatever comes next? Because it is the New England Revolution at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, I I can't think of a better face of this team. So, like, uh, Carlos, we, we always talk about how phenomenal of a player he is. Former MVP is one of the, the handful best players in the league. I love watching him play. I don't know if he gets enough credit as a leader. Like, from things that I've heard around the locker room, from, from the way that he kind of steps up. Again, English as a second language, Definitely the, the way that, that he kind of takes... 
Tommy questions his leadership regularly and how he presents himself oh. and, by the, and, and on the field sometimes. I, yeah, so. No, he says yes. it on the field, so, but that's fine. So what I, what I will say is I was talking to a couple people specifically about Carlos, as, and it was like they they kind of was like, look, he's he's like a, a proper like old school footballer. Like this dude, he's so competitive. He like that's first and foremost. So reading between the lines of that answer, maybe that was a little pressure, you know, NBA style. Like, hey, like I like let's make sure that we do the right coaching hire that that we reeled the correct way, you know, before I commit blindly to the next year. So I think it was more about hey, like let's make sure that that this team is good. Or like, cause like I want to be competing. Right. Cause, cause I mean, you, you got to think about Kyrie and say I want to see my jersey in the rafters right. and leave the next year. <laughs> or, or we're gonna win five, <laughs> six, yeah. seven titles. Like, here's the thing. <laughs> like Carlos is smart. He knows that he, he's seen the revs pre Bruce and he's seen the revs post Bruce here. So when it comes down to the spending aspect of it, Carlos wants to know he's got the assurities that there's gonna build or they're gonna build a roster around him that represents. Uh, what he's got in the last few years. Now, a couple topics before I let you go here. Um, Kurt Analfo, he's part of this. According to your reporting, he's upset that he did not get a bigger say when it came to player personnel decisions with Bruce. Um, is he as central of a figure to this story without giving up too, inf- too much information that you can't give up? Is he as essential as a figure to the story as Richie is in your mind? Oh, it's a great question. Um, these are details that that we're trying to work on as well, because again, as we reported, like with with Richie, it was it, this wasn't, you know, again, we we can't even say, I guess, a hundred percent whether Richie's complaints were fo- even the focal point of the investigation. We just know that it was part of the investigation. So that there tells you that it's more than one person or or, or more than one, I guess, incident or or whatever. So yeah, we're we're trying to put together the pieces. Um, again, like you said, there there are a lot of similarities between the timeline and background of, of Richie's situation to current office situation. But you know, I I don't know anything definitively yet. Again, we're we're still working pretty hard. This is a story that feels like for six eight weeks been working pretty hard. At, won't, won't ever go away. I don't think that this story is ever going to end. Well, no. it feels like the answer is right in front of our face because one of the I think things that has gone unreported here, uh, underreported, not unreported, but underreported <laughs> because of all of the chaos is the other exclusive that you guys had, and that is Kalen Kyle was suspended for 30 days at the beginning of the month of August for dropping her little nugget, which she had to retract, that, oh, Bruce Arena was suspended for making racially insensitive comments. And then the Blazing Musket puts out the article with the audio because it was on a podcast. It kind of just sat there. Nobody really picked it up until the New England market picked it up. And then Kaylin mm-hmm. Kyle goes on suspension, and she's been nowhere to be found because of what she said in relation to this investigation. Now, the cynics here. I don't know if Tom's a cynic. He's a very nice guy. I've been told I'm not a nice guy. <laughs> the cynics would tell you, it's kind of hard not to believe Kaylin Kyle. A, she works for the league. She's inside the building in New York. B, her father-in-law is Adrian Heath, who is best friends with? Bruce Arena. Thank you. So, Kaylin Kyle, will we ever see her again? <laughs> I wasn't in this story. I want to I preface this. This was just Pablo. I was not, I was not a part of this, sure. but but we. I, I feel pretty confident that we're, we'll see Kaylin Kyle again. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it was, it was a... Is it slip up? And I don't think that I mean, we, we're friends. We're friends with Kaylin. We've had her on the show. We've had her on the show, but but it's not and it's not even coming. But at also, her, but it's also the, like, how do you discredit what she says no, but, when she's in but the Tom, house? Tom, there's a there could it could have very easily been something that she misspoke, and it it was when you think of uh, insensitive comments at times, like your your brain can automatically go to racism, sexism. So it could have just been something that she substituted in for a word, but not sure. did it on purpose with, the, with no information. I like understand it, that. But guess what? At the end of the day, she did what she did. Right. And she, and she, and and she got her suspension. It's the same thing that if we say something on the air, we'll get in trouble for it. We do our time and that's it. You move forward. Abs- <laughs> absolutely. But again, it's a little bit different when you work for the league. So it's just worth pointing yeah, out. But it could also be something. That's what happens sim- when you're live. I, I, it was something as sensitive as that, though. I don't always I don't want to automatically go to, well, what does she know? It's more of like I, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and be like she just but misspoke. A, but it is a big part of the story. Uh, we, 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 well, we could go around and around in circles on that all day. But it's just it's worth pointing out. The Athletic had the story earlier this week. Because everybody's been asking, where's Kaylin Kyle since she made we have her our comment? Answer. Now we have our answer. Right. And it had to do with that. The other thing that I found interesting, and this is the last one for me, and I don't know if you guys have anything else before we let Tom Bogart go here. I was on Hercules Gomez's Vamos pod a couple of weeks ago, 
and he said there is a current coach that is under investigation. There's a separate coach that's under investigation by MLS that's still coaching. What do you know about that? I have, that's the first I'm hearing of it. I yeah. can't believe that this one has a midway. No, I have, I have no idea. All right, thanks. Great. Another fun story for there me to, go. for me to, for I us made, to chase. I can't wait. Work. Have, Start have you, hunting. How's uh, that law firm Park Hour Rose to deal with? I wouldn't know. No? You guys haven't, uh, have you guys talked to them at all through Good this answer. process? Good yeah. answer. No, no just can't, can't reveal any sources because, because then we, it, it, no matter what the answer is, it, if it's, if it's a yes, it, then you know, then if it's a no, then it just becomes process of elimination. There you sure. go. I think it's an all interesting right. storyline moving back to the field now to see how this group of players is going to respond, because this is almost like, you, you know, you might not have all the answers, but you at least have the answer of what's going to happen. Yeah. And now you can move forward. So, I mean, Colorado aside, this is a team that is still going to get some players back going into the playoffs the teams that's sitting second place in the east so that's a story in itself tom how is this team going to respond now that this is all quote unquote put behind them for sure yeah and, and for me and like I, i'm sure this is what clint pa is doing but for me the rallying crime the locker room is screw everything screw everybody else this is just us let's band together i you know i don't care about anybody else but the people in this locker room right now and that's how you kind of galvanize the group move forward and like look like again this with, without georgie petrovich it's tough with Brandon Bly being injured, it's tough. But look, you still have Carlos Hill, still have Gustavo Bo, still have Matt Polster and, and Noel Buck and, and Mark Anthony Kay and Dave Romney and, and and Andrew Farrell and go on down the list. Like this is still a very talented team. The Western Conference is pretty light. If they could be competitive in the East, like they would be likely to have home home field advantage in MLS Cup again if they get there. It'll be more difficult to get out of the East because it's very strong. But again, like in any one game sample size or now the, the new playoff rule of the first round is three games, whatever. Carlos Hill is for every game except against Lionel Messi. He's at least arguably the best player on the field. Like, you know, Na Nashville with Hani Mukhtar, you, you could argue and stuff. But like every other, like they have an elite apex match winner. And his impact on the game is such that like they're in any one game sample size stuff can happen and he's somebody who could just dominate and, and take take stuff over so again like i think that's a rallying cry hey like we we we, we come together we continue to be very difficult to beat and carlos do your magic and all those names you just mentioned too and this has been a season we've chronicled it on this show that they've de dealt with a lot of adversity have come through it again nothing like amount. this this is the apex of something massive but we'll we'll see we'll see about moving forward but i think because of the players you just mentioned, because of the talent on the field, and Dylan Barrero being back at training, that's, could give that's them a little back for the rest of the year. No, I understand that, but that's yeah, a spiritual that's a good lift. lift up. I mean, that's, that, that's a guy. That's that, what you're looking yeah. for, though, to try to you're, build. You're looking for small. Think things are a bit time. different since since when he left. He probably came back. Like, what the hell happened here? Yes, he's like, wait, huh, what the hell? Did somebody <laughs> the house on fire? Like, what the hell happened? Did you leave, <laughs> Tommy? Did you leave the pizza in the oven too long? <laughs> Tom Bogert from The Athletic. He's got the latest reporting on everything for the New England Revolution. Make sure you are subscribed to The Athletic. I hope the New York Times is compensating you well with New York steak dinners for all of the work that you are doing down there. And we'll have to catch up when I get back down to the Empire. Yeah, cheers, boys. Yeah, and hopefully uh, we'll have some more fun topics to talk about and have a little bit more fun. Oh, how does it get more fun than this? this Come is, on. This is as good as it gets, man. Tom Bogert, thank you so appreciate much. You guys. Appreciate it. All right. So... This game doesn't matter this weekend. Okay. It just it doesn't. All this, all this work I did. I, 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 I'm just I, kidding. I, I could have told you that there was no reason to watch any I'm of this I, Colorado team. Relax. But but here here's here's where I'll spin it. The world is not on fire if they lose because there's a simple out. Way too much going Agreed. on this week. A team that's whatever. But I do think if they win and they win convincingly, Colorado. It doesn't matter. So it's an me, MLS game. I, I'm going to agree with you mostly, but it's what I asked Tom Bogart last. I'm interested just to see how this team, these players are going to respond, and if the effort is there, which again it has, there it hasn't been a lack of effort over the last six no. weeks. If the effort is there, if this team Close plays well, last week uh, again, I I actually think Minnesota played better than the Revolution did Still got to close it out. Oh, You're very in the 93rd true, very true. minute. But that's why I do think that it's interesting to see what's going to happen Saturday night, just just to see the, re the response to all of this. I am too, and what I uh, also took from, from Tom Bogert there was how confident he is uh, in Carlos Hill's leadership skills. Yes. So this is where you're going to see these veterans on the team, your captain, you know, he said it perfectly. The the Carlos Heels, the Gustavo Bows, the Matt Polsters, 
uh, the Andrew Farrells, right? These are the guys you're going to see step up in these moments because let's be honest, these are veterans and these are professionals. These, these, this isn't like uh, a toxic group. There's been no animosity amongst this team before. And it could bring them even – we've it, talked this, about this, this for weeks might, now. It, yeah. You know, do not to make this like a, you know, a remember the Titans whole rah-rah story, but it could very easily work in their favor where it's like, hey, listen, we still believe in ourselves and the talent that we have. We're in this position in the standings that we are in because of how we've played. And – it, it hasn't been catastrophe since this all broke six weeks ago. They've they've been fine. They haven't been great, but they've been fine. They're getting healthier, and they're going to finish this season. They have the potential to finish this season strong. And then the MLS playoffs, anything can happen. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better opponent with all this going on. Exactly. Tomorrow. Now, let me throw it to you this Tom, because you've covered this league for a long time. Have you ever seen a game with two organizations with so much – turmoil insert dumpster fire gif yeah all of that going i mean this this matchup with it's more off the field than on the field stuff i'm sure there's a shivas usa reference in there somewhere oh God. Shivas. um to it's got to be up not there. recent memory necessarily um i mean this is this is the most unique situation uh, of them all um well, just for the the polar opposites, you know, you have Colorado that's in true. last place in the league, and in a market that New England that's in second place in you know, the. You're in comparing the Colorado conference. market wise to New England. There is a big difference in how much it affects the rest of the league. Like if Colorado is a dumpster fire and they're having all these issues in you know internally. It doesn't make as much of a splash. In I understand we've talked about it. The news coverage hasn't been as much as we want. But as far as the league goes and the people that follow the league, what's happening in New England means more to the league than what's happening in Colorado. Can because we agree of on that? Bruce. Yeah, because, because of Bruce, Bruce and yes. because of the market in general. Well, I, I don't, trust me, they don't care about the market. Still if it was Brad Friedel, if it was Brad Friedel, nobody would be talking about it. But it is still a story in Colorado, like all of this that's happening. It, it's a mess. Yeah, the to the people in Colorado, it's yes. a story. To them, to the, to the league, they don't care. The only, re the only thing that the league really cares about and the only thing that people around the league care about is New England, but they only really care about Bruce. If it was just the Revs, Nobody would care if they would they would treat it just like Colorado. And that's just a political reality of the situation uh, because of who the Revs are as an organization, which is why I am so concerned. And I have been God, people, beating I'm the sorry. drum. Anybody listening to this episode with headphones? I'm sorry. Listening to the episode. What about people working here? <laughs> like we have we have studios. We have other radio I'm stations. I'm just banging around like we're having a yeah. jam session in here. I have been beating the drum for the past two weeks now that you need a major coach to come in here and be able to continue the momentum that you have built since 2019, making yourself a legitimate franchise. You do not want to go back to the dark ages, the medieval times, the unhappy days, the troubles, as the Irish would say. You don't want the troubles again. You've come too far. You've come too far, and you need to be able to go out there and get another big figurehead that – the Scott Zolax can identify with that the regular mainstream media in Boston. Why are you can so identify hung up with? on that though? Because people don't care about the Revs. People care about Bruce Arena. They don't. Well, why are we do? Why are we making moves for a club based on the the media attention that they're going to get? You know what I mean? Because I, because because that's not what Bruce was doing. No, but he was. He didn't need because he his presence gravitated in the media right but that but bruce hates the media that's so but the, it, it, i understand but i'm saying like if you're maybe okay if you're screwing your head on you know and it's the crafts head that you're wearing if you're right? the crafts maybe but i think they also wanted to legitimize their club on the field and that's why Which they is what gave, they did by bringing bruce right so the point i'm trying to make is that if that exists internally it doesn't necessarily need to be this it's not going to be him, but to use him as an example, Jose Marina, right? It's not going to be somebody like that. It doesn't yes, need to be. It needs to be. No, so I, I, don't I don't think so for this season. And the reason why not for is this season. We're thinking oh, 2024. Okay, this that, season's shot. I want you to clarify that because th not shot, but like you don't bring someone in with seven season's games left. It's not shot. There was seven games left going into the postseason. You, I, I agree. You let this. You let this you let coach Clinton write it out. Yes, for because sure. He's in the organization. He knows the players. The players know him. I. 
I think we just needed to clarify that you're talking about next season. Yeah, listen, I, I could care less about this season anymore. To be honest, like, and if you're a fan, that. you shouldn't care about this season. Oh, come oh, on. That, be, th that's still unless, unless they honestly go, because here's the thing, the performances of the last two weeks has not given you anything to be inspired about. Well, I Which don't camera know am I looking at? Either. That one. Austin. Minnesota. Uh, who was the one before Austin and Minnesota? Because they drop points up. Montreal. Montreal. You, you, you drop points to Montreal. Unless you actually go out there and dominate these next two weeks, the last four, five, is going to suck for you. Charlotte at home. Now, granted, you're home where you've been good. and you Good. Haven't you've been the best in the league. You've been good. Yeah, record-wise, you're the best in the league. Sure, whatever. Uh, whatever. Oh, what does that of mean? Of course, yeah. <laughs> Look at some undesirable performances so far. This year. Go back. Charlotte's a trap game. Charlotte's a game where you think you're going in there. You might think that you're the better team. They're one of those games where that's one of those. They're like DC United. They're 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 a trap game. You, you know, you can't take them lightly. Then you're home against Columbus. Always a tough game. Then you're on the road versus Orlando. You're on the road game. versus Nashville, and then you're at home to end the season versus Philadelphia. If you that's do not awful, take six points, awful stretch. If you do not take six, that's a show me stretch. Yeah. Wait. No. It's, you know what I mean. <laughs> if if you do not take six points in these next two weeks, kiss this season goodbye. Period. Because you won't. Because then you won't sit above a top. Because if you're not finishing no, I mean, in the top I, four honestly, spot, I, then what's the point? You're not. You're not going. You're not going to advance far. So you think they're going to just lose the last five games? Nobody said. Did you listen to me? Go I ahead. think that I think that the six no, points. No, because you're talking about dropping below the fourth. It, I said if you drop below fourth place, okay. it's going to be impossible for you to make any type of real I MLS Cup that. run. So that's my, I'm going to say. So do you think they're just going to lose the last five games? Who said anything about intentionally losing the last just, five games? I didn't say. I'm just asking you a question. Why are you getting? I said. Yeah, but it, are they because the rest the of the conference is getting better. You're not going to cheat. You're not going to cheat. You're not going to catch Orlando and Philadelphia. Right, but they're but, getting hot at the right time. But what if they they win three out of the last five? As long as the first two are against Chicago and Colorado. Microphone, there you microphone, go. microphone. As long as the first two are thank you. <laughs> as long as the you first want to use one of those. <laughs> <laughs> microphone. Uh, the the thing is, God, Tom. listen, Tom, you are unhinged. I know. But I'm you trying know, to reel you back. You know, here's the thing. I have to win these two versus Chicago. I know. And Colorado. I, I, you I keep you do this I, all the time. But you, you do, but you don't. This is must win territory no, now. I, I just I I don't think so. But I think that. You are still putting too much weight on finishing first or second in this conference. I think when you get to that point, it's the revolution have proven it doesn't necessarily matter where they Not play just in the, the playoffs. Not the revolution, the, in the, general, over the entire the supporter course shield, of MLS. Look, look at the history but of the supporter a, shield in the last 10 years. But you had a more... You had a, you had a more consistent... Roster, then you got a really good roster. What do you here. mean? We've been talking Hold about on, the out. depth of this team for the whole. You're going into the season. playoffs. You're going into the playoffs with a brand new goalkeeper. You're going into the playoffs with a makeshift back line right now. You're going into the playoffs with. We well, have a month. Sure, okay. but and guys are getting healthy. But also, everybody else is getting healthy too. Orlando's getting healthier. Nashville's that's getting happens. healthier. That's fine. Philadelphia's getting, Philadelphia getting healthier. Columbus happens. is getting healthier. That's what happens. You're still going to be missing Barrero. You're still going to be missing By. Okay, so those are two, and they've made do without those guys for the last and three And there's, there's a few. There's a couple players that they've brought in here that have stepped in and done very well in those. Well, positions. we still haven't seen Vlatsic yet. Tomas Vlatsic is still delayed. He's not no, going to be. Here. So I was talking about Ian Harks, and I was talking about Chakalai. I mean, he's Chakalai has been. Fantastic yeah, since they, he's been here, but the problem is, is the defense for this team. That's always been the problem. I mean, there, it is, but it is. I mean, I, they, they were a, a, a corner kick clearance yeah, away. Yeah, I mean, from you're talking about two, and again, it's not great. On the road, those are mental mistakes at the end of the game. Hopefully, a goalkeeper from the other end coming in yeah. and, and keeping a play alive. Those are things that can't happen but the, mentally. The de even with this makeshift defense, Mike, and it hasn't been perfect. And Earl Edwards actually made some fantastic. I think he's been Minnesota, solid, but this defense hasn't looked poor. No. Even with all the revolving door, I, I don't think so at all. I, I think that they've been just fine, and they, you know, they haven't they, given up many goals. If they leave Minnesota last week with the shutout, then we're saying that they had a good performance. If yes. the last two weeks the games are closed out, Tom's take would be a little different right now. Uh, but again, it would, because I feel ties, much more confident. They end in ties again. Mental mistakes. You don't. It's not good. I'm not. I'm not saying no. Those to, are, those to are give games. up goals in stoppage time at two consecutive in the, games in, in, the, in the in the in the fashion good. that they did it. Yeah, too, it's bad. Just it's not gross. good. But. 
again, I, I wouldn't go like I wouldn't overreact and say the season's over because you had two ties the last two weeks. No, but you also kind of walk into this weekend against Colorado not knowing the certainty of where this team's at mentally. Well, that's why I said this. Yes. Is a, that's why well, here's, you said to start this segment to not even who you don't even care about the game. Can't. That's why I. <laughs> Well, that's why you should care about the yeah. game to see how they're going to respond. You, let me ask you this. Do you think the fans care about the game this weekend? Do you think they care about the fact that the I franchise think, blew up this week? I think the fans do care about every game. And yeah. I think that's I the would point hope, we're trying. I would hope but what do you think matters more, right? I would hope if you're a fan think, that you would care about the, the game. The immediate future... I would say the the there's some concern, obviously. This is some, like I think this is like, art, like what we have to do with artists sometimes where you separate... The, the art artist. from the artist. Thank you. Yeah, this is kind of that. Like, you don't love what's going on in the organization, all this other stuff off the field, but you still have to, if you're a fan of the revolution, you still have to support the team. Tom, you have to. You say he's not supporting no, the team. No, but here's but the thing. Again, here's the here's where I, sometimes I think you get things a little but bit you confused. Hold on. But you just said, do you, do you think players, do you think fans are going to care about what's happening? Yes, it, the fans are going to care. That was what I just said. If anything, they so might care you're, more. You're going back. But but when it, we talk about weighing the, the moment, the game is secondary. Listen, th there is so much going on. It is so heavy what's happening, but that does not take away from the fact that this team is still a, a contender in this in the league. There's still a contender in the the misunderstanding here is that you think because we live in this world, especially you, you're in it 24/7. It consumes you. Especially that the average week. fan is is also consumed by this. The average fan doesn't even know half of this stuff is going on. Yeah. Don't get lost in the hashtag, okay? What's Those aren't up? your wait, average fans. Wait, wait, wait. Fans. Time out, time out, time out. What, what, they don't know what stuff the is average, going on. The average fan, they know what's happening, but they're not as consumed by it as we are. Are you sure about that? 100%. You're, oh. Again, Tom, you live on the internet. You live in the hashtag. You think that that they speak. That is the that is the the minority, vo, the vocal minority of the fan base. You have to remember that. You, you have do, to remember that. Yeah, I mean, you you do, think there's twenty five thousand people. Hashtag. You live in the hashtag. You think there's twenty five thousand people that go to Gillette Stadium to watch the Revolution play that can't wait to get on X after the game to talk to you in your spaces. I know that there is people that do, but I'm saying the but average do you think, fan does not care. They want to see this team succeed. They're not. They're not caught up in the legality of Bruce Arena. Oh well, there goes another coach. You don't think people are disenfranchised after this week? You're out of your effing mind. Do you think you think people don't? You think people? You think people are just going to shove this to the side? But and, you're, but you're speaking for everybody. It's not everybody. Li I'm listen. Listen. I'm, I've listened to Boston Sports Talk Radio a lot this and week. And guess what? When, they didn't care until it became an S show. Yeah. On, uh, if you go so back what are you to our show, about? if you go back to our show last week, we called for something. That I, we didn't. I you didn't know, know why the they care? Because it's a circus. That's but why no they one care. was talking yeah, but the, about but it. The general tone when you listen to the Mark Bird trans, the Scott Zolax, yeah, we're in it. But because this has been handled so poorly, because you just got rid of the face of the franchise, Fanabla. It's over. They have a contract with them. They have to talk about it. Otherwise, yeah, they but they don't care. care the same way. Because they care because it's a circus. Why are you so caught up on the media's attention of this team? Because it's taken Tom, away from the, everything that we're talking about off the field. And yes, because there's so much speculation and because it's been so poorly handled, yes, it has become the most important thing. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, we got go play a game this weekend. You just lost but, the greatest coach and the face of U.S. soccer. But you're saying that the fans as a whole do not care about this game and you are wrong not as much as this i i, I don't this, know this this takes agree precedent to, right agree now. To disagree. so if you're a fan Fun. if you're a fan of the revolution and you have apple you paid your money and you're going to sit down at 9:30 on saturday night you don't think with all of those other things going on that that fan's going to be invested at that kickoff you paid your money at apple at the beginning of the year thinking that bruce arena was going to be the head coach you do yes, you didn't answer but, my question but, but the, the you season, didn't answer my question the all is of still that happening. stuff is still going on at 9:30 on saturday night you're a fan of the team you follow the team you paid your money. You're going to sit down and watch the game. They're, they're going to not care as much because of all the stuff that's happening. You're going to sit down and watch the game, but the, the, the thing that's going to be on your mind the most is, oh, God, I don't know anything about this guy, Clint P.A. No, Bruce Reed is not on the sideline. The team has dropped disagree. four Tom, points in the last there, there two be, games there here because they've done people, terrible like, game management on substitutions. There might be like a percentage of people that think that, but I, 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 okay. I, I disagree. Right, fine, for fine. When, that, when that game gets kicked, but by the way, when at the game... At Mike D on air at Nick G Radio When that game is over... The vocal minority come after us. That doesn't matter to me. When the game is over or the game begins, maybe all of that is the case, but that's my point is that the majority of people... At 9.30, if you're up and you paid your money and you're watching that game, they're just going to care about what's on the okay. field for that too. Give me a percentage. 
Give me a percentage of how many people you think. Tom, why does it matter, the, by the way? Who cares? Because you think that th this game does just because this game does not is not as important as what's going on right now. It's just okay. Not. So how, listen, let me ask you this. I think what percentage of the New England fan base do you think is in the rebellion? No, 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 no. What do you no, mean? No, no, no. These are the people that we're are talking online. about. The These percentage the people, of people you're, you're, that. What do we the, care about more? Do we care day. more about the game, or do you care more about the off-field drama? Why, that's why, what it comes down so to. So my, but that's why I'm going to let you guys keep going. But my, my point is that it's both. It can, it can be it's both. It's absolutely you're living both. In, you're living you're, in a world of absolutes. It can be both. But if you think they can care fan, about it before kickoff, watch the game, and then go back to it. Both are true. You can. You care about the Barcelona situation less as long as you keep winning. Winning makes it go away. Man, you're all Tom. You're all, you're all over the place. That's the today, point bro. we're trying to but make. Right, but 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 you can't you're guarantee that they're going to win right now because they're playing like dog. You know what? I don't, well, I don't think that's true either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you said you the one that just said Minnesota outplayed them last but week, and then say, they should have lost against Austin. Yeah, but I didn't say I didn't say the second part to that. I, I said think, the second part. Okay, and, but I also didn't say that they were playing poorly. I think I, I think you called that, Minnesota the better team. I think Minnesota played better than them. Yeah, I didn't say the Revolution played. And guess poorly. what? They still should. Said you said. But that. guess what? You if just they, did. If they leave that game, you literally with three took points. it. Oh, you literally literally listen, you took it as an absolute. We're not going to do what you said, he said, she said, they said, whatever. We're not doing that right now. We're going to talk about the facts. The facts are people are going to still care about this team. People still want to see this team win. They're going to watch the game on Saturday against Colorado, and they're going to want them to win the game. Is there going to be a part of them that thinks, man, this Bruce Arena stuff is crazy? Will it be a conversation amongst the average fan? Sure. But they're not going to stop supporting this team because of it. Maybe the people online will because guess what? They are the hardcore fan base. It's good. It's good for the, if it's good for the team, conversation interactions engagement it's great i'm not hating on the hashtag i'm just saying they are the vocal minority the average fan is not on x if i go home and talk to my dad who's been watching the revolution since 1996 hey dad why don't you give me the breakdown what Richie williams situation bruce arena he's gonna be like oh i know bruce is out but yeah they got a game against colorado tomorrow that's a fact that is a fact and the average fan is and think about it you complain about the lack of coverage in 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 these in the boston area right and they don't care until it's a circus do you think the average fans are going to be checking for that? They probably were not even checked in to begin with because they knew they weren't getting coverage. So I think that you got to keep, okay, the storylines are there. We're covering them. We're giving people the facts. But we can't sit here and speak uh, uh, and generalize the Revolution fan base and say that they've given up on this team, and that's just not true. It's not, it's not true. It, they've given up on the club. It's the club that they've given up. It's, it's not the guys on the field. It's the club itself. I, I mean, it, it, I'll tell you what, that, my interactions with people this week, my interactions. But think with about people the people you interact with on a regular basis, Tom. Trust me, my interactions go far beyond social media. Give me a little more credit, please. I'm just saying, but still, it's the, it's the hardcore people that are involved in this every single day. The average fan is not. It, they are not. It's just, it's the same reason why Fenway Park still sells the, out games. That's a, that's a team that doesn't care about their club right now either. They the, just fired the GM. I would say the average fan. And I'll just leave it at this. And like you said, we could agree to disagree. They want to go sing Sweet Caroline and, and you know, eat a hot dog and drink beer. They don't and take pictures with Sly, your buddy. That's all they care about. Sorry. I. Oof. Medication's I, working today. I, th yeah, it is. <laughs> that that went right? on for 10 minutes longer than I thought it did. You guys all right? Everybody good? Oh, we're great. All right. I love Tom. We went way over. I don't even know. Whatever. It's just should YouTube, we be like go with bonus it? content for YouTube? Should yeah. we just talk about Carlos real quick and just get it out of the way? Whatever you want to do. Do you think he wants to come back here? I think uh, oh, it's, this is a this is a. a you know where answer. I'm going with this. I know where you're going. I think it's a wait and see because just like any player, Mike, if if this goes the way that it goes and they win, he might be happy. He will. If if it goes the other way, he's going to be upset. This is what happens with star players. So again, his contract's up through the end of the year. We'll see him next year and then we'll see what happens. I think he's uh I think he's going to be highly influential on who is here full time as the head coach next year and if he's not happy with it, he's out. Yeah. I think and I, I think, think that's Bo, fair. I think Bo follows him and probably Vrioni too. I think if you don't get somebody in here that the captain and your best player and arguably a top three player in the league doesn't like, he's gone. I think they have to listen to he, him. If they didn't before, they right. have to listen to Yeah, now. I think that he has to have say in yeah. who comes in. He has to have say. I don't feel confident about him coming back next year. It's all based on who the next guy is, which is so why I'm I go sorry, back to my original. Con is his contract up like at the end of this season no, or next, next year. year? Okay, so he but had soccer, you can force yourself out. Got it. Understood. Yeah, that's what Georgie did. Gotcha. Um. You would see him doing that? I could see him doing that. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, I, I guess I could. Yeah, I mean, and, but again, we don't know how, the, we have to, you got to let the season He's on the other side first. of 30. Yeah. yeah. 
He is, he doesn't want to be a part of a, a rebuild, like no. you said. No. And if, got, Bo, if Bo, Bo is probably done. Chankalai is on a is on a loan right now. Who's to say the next guy is going to want to bring in Chankalai? And who's to say the next guy? Well, uh, they who, should. Who, I mean, who's to say that Chankalai is going to want to be here? That's a you, could, that's you true. could be looking at a uh, heavy any revs two roster here on the first team next year, potentially. Potentially, if this thing takes a turn. So that's why that's why I go back. And all the people, Tom, you're so stupid. Why would you say Mourinho come to New England? Oh, <laughs> I'm not talking to you. But well, he was the one who's. But it, I didn't that, say I'm that. It was also, it was <laughs> also other people. Oh no, I'm in a recording. I'll call you back. Okay. It was also other people this More week. Bonus content for YouTube. It was also other people this week. They're like, Tom, you're so stupid. Why would you say Jose Mourinho's come to New England? He never come to New England. No. It's the name of somebody like a Jose Mourinho, so you keep Carlos Heel here. That's why you do it. Okay. You don't go out and get a Gio Savarese and think that fixes everything. I don't think Jesse Marsh fixes everything, and I'm a big Jesse Marsh guy. You I'm are. probably one of the biggest Jesse Marsh supporters out there. What about Wayne Rooney? There. No. 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 He like, loves, he loves MLS. Neville? Neville, I, Neville, you could sell me on. Neville, you could sell but me would on. But would Carlos want Phil Neville? I think Carlos. What about I, I think Carlos Henry. has to have. I think it's a great point by you. He, all of this Henry. happening, he has to have a say. If oh, you Carlos. Want to keep oh, happy, for sure. Yeah. To. Well, you know, I, I, there is also. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's Sergio Ramos. Because he is Ramos. the captain. He speaks for the players. There's some have. Spanish former Spanish players that are available or going to be available to coach her in the near future. That hey, Sp Carlos Hill from Spain. Maybe he wants somebody from his native land to come over here, and and that's their way into coaching is being able to coach one of the best players in the league. It is tough too, like just thinking about it, I mean, I, I, you know, reacting to your question, which is a good, fair question, Tom, about Carlos Hill. Like again, when you look at the uh, as a player too, you, your job is to play soccer, but all of this other stuff going on uh, off the field has to make you question things as well. I think, I think that's a human response to it at, to, at the end of it. So I stand by my. Like, he's the leader. This is his franchise. He's one of the best of all time. Would you want to maybe try to close it out here? Sure. He's also said he's loved his time here. In exactly. And, and, again, we'll see how this team responds under his leadership. But it's tough. And it's, it's a tough question. about the end of the cycle. You know, we want to win one before the end of the cycle. He just he didn't commit yesterday. He had an opportunity to commit yesterday. Can he you blame did. him, though? I don't yes. blame him. I don't blame him. I mean, I'm, no. Can I blame him for not committing? No. But yeah, if you're yeah. a fan... You have a reason to be upset here because it's like, I would oh rather, my god, now I've lost my coach and now I might lose my cap. But I would rather him be honest because you know what? If he says yes, I'm committed to this team for the well, foreseeable Kyrie, future. Yeah. yeah, you don't you don't want him then in the off season. All of a sudden, it starts to come out. Carlos Hill not happy. Carlos Hill wants out. Not happy with coach's you know choice. And then now because and again, whole, we're we're postulating, but not to uh, uh, not to say he didn't have a voice with Bruce Arena, but maybe this puts Carlos Hill in more conversations. He steps up and more. He likes, and he likes to be a part of that even more. That makes him feel here, more so he had some say. It is Messi's MLS. And if you read the Tata Martino quote from over the weekend, the guy is not settling for anything less than an MLS Cup here. And he's going to win, and he's going to be in the playoffs. Okay? You have to compete with that now. Mm. You now have to put up with what Miami's doing down there, and you have to keep pace with that. And what you've done has been very good for the last several years. You have created your own lane. You didn't have to go out there and get the big, sexy, designated players. You brought in the right designated players that are built to um, accentuate uh, the skills of Gustavo Bo and Carlos wow. Hill. And interesting. Yes, all of the all of them. Not Jerome Veroni. Um, I don't think any. I don't think. Any, I thought he played actually. I don't well think any night, of though. what we're asking for right now happens until a stadium is built. I don't think any of this happens. You just well, that's where that's You're where not, a you have to unload. See all that money you got sitting in that back room, Bob Kraft, because of all that oh. money you got from Tejon and Buxa and Turner, Petrovic, Petrovic, an extra twenty million there. Invest that Petrovic money into a coach, and then give him the keys to the franchise. Everything. Just do what you did before. This was an internal issue between Richie and Bruce. My personal plea to Jonathan Kraft, oh. who probably is not watching this at this Maybe. point. We never, never know. know. My personal plea to Jonathan Kraft, because that's who really is running the show here. Robert could care less. Yeah. He's, he's just a namesake. Jonathan, you saw the success Bruce gave you. You saw how the stadiums filled out every week. You saw how the tone has changed on the New England Revolution. You want to lose that?
Go out there and get me a name. Just Tom. Nobody else. And yeah, how about, yeah, just end it. No, that's great. I We're out. It. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Great show.